All right, now we're joined by Arkansas student athletes uh, Stanley Amude, JT Note, and Jalen Williams. Uh, again, if you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll bring a microphone around. And uh, we'll start with the gentleman up here in the front. Uh, all right, I don't know you that well, so we'll start with that. <laughs> here you go. Hey, 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 guys, uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat. Is that, this is for Stanley. You know, Stanley, you've waited five years and like 130-something games to finally get to play in the NSA tournament. Could you uh, – what, what's that journey been like? And um, is this kind of what you pictured? If you came to Arkansas, you'd be sitting there at one of these NSA press conferences. And how, how happy are you that, that, that you made, you know, this decision? Oh, yeah, I'm real excited, you know, to be playing in March Madness finally. It's been one of my big goals, you know, since I started playing basketball. So, you know, I'm just excited to get the – start playing, actually, with, with my guys. And, and then um, if I could do a follow-up. Uh, you know, Arkansas, who, who else did you think about? And, um, you know, just well, – it's been kind of an up-and-down year, but obviously it's ending the right way. Um, I, right when I got in the portal, I wasn't really thinking of any other schools. After I talked with, with Coach Muss, you know, it was really just about who could beat what he had to offer, and uh, it wasn't really much that, that could beat it. We'll go with Mike here, and then we'll be here. Mike Harrington, Buffalo right. News. Um, J.D., I'm interested in your thoughts on Coach Musselman. Uh, we see the, the flamboyance and the enthusiasm and running around. What's it like dealing with – that part of him and just what's it like on an everyday basis having that kind of energy every day uh great man he just like always energized he always happy sometimes he angry most of the times <laughs> but he just him uh coach Musk, that's my guy uh, i've been with him for three years so we got that relationship so it's just fun to be around him up front here. Hey, Jalen, Curtis Wilkerson with Hog Sports. Just curious what you have seen so far from Vermont that stood out to you as you guys prepare, and, and then maybe your particular thoughts on the matchup with Ryan Davis. Um, yeah, they're a really solid team. Um, I think they're the fourth oldest team in the NCAA, so um, they're a really old team. A lot of guys that have experience, and they're a really good shooting team. They're probably one of the best shooting teams we played this year, so um, we're looking forward to this matchup. We know what we got to do. And Ryan Davis, he's a great player. Um, he can space the floor. He can play in the post. He can do a lot for their team. And he's also putting a lot of playmaking position for them, too. So he's a great player, and it's going to be a good matchup. Question in the back. Andre Robinson, Challenger Community News. Congratulations on your success and being here. Welcome to Buffalo. Um, my question to you guys is, um, last year's run ended in the Elite Eight with a loss to Baylor. Um, what strengths does this team this year have that give you the opportunity to go back to the Elite Eight? Um, care to just talk about that a little bit, just the strengths that you guys have? Um, I would say a strength that we have this year that we didn't have last year was a lot of more experience. Um, we might not have as many old, older guys, but we have a lot of guys that have played in the position that we want to get back to. Like like JD started Elite Eight, Devo started Elite Eight, I started in Elite Eight. So, we have a lot of guys that know what it takes to get there, and we've been in that position, so we feel like we can help these other guys and knowing what it takes to get there. Over here. Yeah, this is for Jalen. You know, you, you were fortunate enough to get to play in the NCAA tournament run as a freshman. You know, we talked about Stanley waited five years, Adis waited four, four years. Um, even I know that's nine years together. Um, how happy are you that these older guys are, are getting, you know, an opportunity and they – and maybe Stanley as a follow-up after Jalen, um, does it mean more? Do you think you appreciate it more? I know as a freshman you guys got to the Summit Finals and you one went away, but do you think maybe now you appreciate it more? So maybe Jalen, Stanley. Um, yeah, it's it's great being able to share the court with these guys, knowing that how hungry they are they are for these wins. They're just as hungry as we are um, going into these games. They want to win. We all want to win together. We want to go far in this tournament and. Uh, being able to share the court with these guys, and it's been great, and I'm ready to keep going. Uh, yeah, and I mean, uh, it feels great to you know, finally be able to be, make it to the tournament. You know, I know you said J1 made it his first year, but, you know, it takes a lot of work. And, you know, coming from a mid-major where you got to win all three games to make it, it's, it's tough. So, you know, being, being able to be in this position is a blessing, and, and I'm happy to be here with my guys. Right here. Hey, Scotty Bordelon with Whole Hog Sports. Um, 
Stanley, I asked Eric Henderson at South Dakota State earlier about what he remembered about you when you were at South Dakota. He mentioned you had a couple really big scoring games against them. That came to mind first for him. Then he commented uh, on your improvement defensively. Um, what, what strides do you feel like you've made on that end of the floor? And then what do you remember about maybe those big games you had? Yeah, uh, I think I had my career high against them um, in the Pentagon. I had 41, and then we lost at their place. I had 34. So those were those two games he's probably talking about. But um, as far as the defensive side, I think I've just been thinking more about it going into the games. I think um, playing at South Dakota, I had a lot of scoring responsibility. So I think coming here, you knowing that I have to play that role, you know, defense and rebounding. So I think it's just a mindset coming into the game, knowing what I got to do and, and taking care of business. Christina Long, the Southwest Times record. Um, Stanley, is there any SEC teams or other teams that you guys have faced this year that you feel like Vermont kind of is similar to, or are they unique at all? Uh, I wouldn't say SEC. Maybe like teams like UNI, a lot of um, you know smart teams that really move the ball and shoot threes. So I think it's just a real slower-paced game with them. I, I think the SEC is a faster-paced conference, so um, I think it's going to be different, but we're, we're doing a good job preparing for them. And then for any of you, um, I guess we can start with Jalen. Um, what do you make of kind of this region and how it's a pretty pretty stacked one with Gonzaga at the top? Um, yeah, um, looking at it, it was a pretty stacked region. But of course, we're just looking at this team that's ahead of us right now, focus on the game that's in front of us, and we'll cross that road when we get there. Up front here. I'll bring a microphone in a second. A couple questions. First off, Stanley, I remember in uh, before practice started back in October, you talked about it. Your freshman year, you were one of the guys that brought the stools out for the starters when the timeouts came. I mean, do you think when you think back on that and how far you've come since then, uh, what, how would you kind of describe? I think you didn't play much, and now obviously you're, you're you're playing a lot for one of the best teams in the country. Yeah, it's you know it's a blessing, and uh, it's just a, a testament to the work that I put in and. I think just believing in myself, even when I was doing that at South Dakota, pulling out the stools and timeouts, I think that just, that confidence in myself never, never wavered. So I think that um, I'm just happy to be here, really, just, just trying to take it all in and live in the moment. And maybe for, for Stanley and, and JD, I know you guys really shored up your three point defense um, the last part of the season, but you know, AM shot pretty well. Eric obviously was not happy. Um, and this is a pretty good three point shooting team on paper. What do you think about their three-point shooting? And do you guys expect to get back to playing the kind of perimeter defense you've played for, for most of the last 20, 20, however many games it's been? Uh, yeah, the uh, coach has been honest. You know, hands in the eyeballs at all times, especially with a team like this, they, uh, they could really shoot it. So if we take that away from them and make them dribble, then we'll be in a good position. But I think it's just keeping them, keep improving and keep um, focusing on that, that three-point percentage defense. And just to piggyback off what Stan said, um, just keeping our hand in the eyeball, making them shoot in the two-point uh, area, and just forcing everything to be tough. That's what we want to do to them. You have a question? Go ahead. <laughs> hey, this, this, this is for Jalen, JD. I mean, last year you guys, you know, finished real strong, just like you did this year. You get beat in the SEC tournament semifinals. You're, you're number four seed. You're playing a 13th seed from a, a mid-major in the Northeast, you know, Colgate now Vermont. It just seems like a lot of similarities. Have, have you guys thought about that? And if so, what what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, we kind of had the same position from last year, same type of team that we're going to play. So we just got to come prepared. Uh, and from the start of the game, we got to be on point, and we can't. Uh, come out slow like we did last year versus Colgate and then have to fight our way all the way back. So we want to come out and uh, just come from the jump and just play hard. This yeah. is uh, for JD and, and Jalen. Do you guys feel like you're more at home with Bob asking all these questions? What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> we feel like we back at home. <laughs> A little bit, obviously. A little bit. <laughs> right down here. It, Stanley, I believe uh, – Caleb Klein's a guy that you know from your days at, at South Dakota. I guess he's a, been a GA on the on the team for a couple of years. Kind of what's y'all's relationship and and kind of what's it like to you know spend time with him here, share this experience with him? Me and Klein, we got a good we got a real good relationship. Uh, my junior year, he was my roommate actually, and at South Dakota. So 
um, I've known him for a long time, and uh, you know, coming here, it was nice to know that I, used, I had somebody that was that that cared about me, so that like he wasn't gonna lead me away, like tell me something that I didn't want to hear, or tell me something that I just want to hear to get here. So I think that it was nice to you know to have him in that recruiting process. And JD, I talked to Jalen a little bit earlier at the, at the falls, and he said you were the best two K player on the team. I guess just what what are those? <laughs> what are those, uh, those those games like, and kind of what's the team bonding experience in a more normal tournament setting now? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's fun just playing 2K. Like, 2K actually helped me get better. Like, just making reads, uh, just playing defense, all that. Uh, Stan think he could beat me, but he really can't. But, nah, just having fun, just bonding. Everybody play 2K, so we all just – be on the sticks. Who they say was? Who said that he was the best 2K player? J. Will. You heard him. We gotta be realistic. <laughs> you ain't never seen me play. <laughs> <laughs> Jalen and JD, y'all are coming off of the Elite Eight, obviously last year, and great stretch of run up into the SEC tournament. But it feels like nationally, y'all are still getting put on quote unquote upset watch with this Vermont team. Is that adding any extra motivation for y'all going into this game tomorrow? Um, for sure, but I feel like that's been our thing since, since the beginning of this season. Like, we've always been overlooked. We were 0-3 we were at the beginning of the conference, and everybody turned their back on us, and we just kept believing in each other. So um, what this team can do, I feel like it's the sky's the limit. We believe in each other. We believe that the guy next to us is going to make the big shot every game, no matter who it is. So uh, we just keep believing in each other, and we're going to go game by game. Yeah, just to kind of go on what Jay Will said, um, we always believe in each other. Uh, each and every day we come to practice, uh, go hard. So when we get in the game, I feel like we all comfortable in our positions, whatever it is. And and when we down, we feel like we never out of a game. We was down, what, 20 to Tennessee, but we felt like we were still right there in it. So, I mean, this group, we just fight. This is more for JD and Stanley. I asked Moses Moody this a few weeks ago because I've personally never <laughs> seen it. He said he hadn't seen it. Can Jalen Williams frown? Can he, I mean, he, he does nothing it. but smiling. Smile. Does he frown. have the physical ability to frown? I mean, have you seen him when he's tired out there sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> he's tired, so, um, nah, he, uh, yeah, Jay Will, he's always, you know, enthusiastic. You know, he's happy to be here. You could tell. So, I don't think he's never really in a bad mood practice-wise or anything like that. He's always, he's always getting this going. Question up here? Time for a couple more. It's coming around. I know. <laughs> uh, Jalen, uh, you didn't get a chance to answer my question about the similarities, you know, between last year and this year. I mean, being fourth seed, coming off a semifinal loss, et cetera. Uh, I mean, does it strike you as kind of a similar situation? Yeah, for sure. It's a it's a similar situation for sure, but we're also more prepared. Like the guys that were here last year, they got the experience that we know that we can't have that slow start. We know that we got to go from the jump and we got to respect every team that's in front of us. So um, we also grew from last year. So we got to write our own story. It's a new year and we just got to do our own thing. I mean, well, for J Jalen, Jaden, you know, Eric would say the other day on his radio show that when he was in Nevada and they were ranked in the top five and they started 15 or whatever, that they just weren't having fun. And he sounded like he was determined for you guys to have fun. I know he took you out on the boat in Tampa and took you to Niagara Falls. I mean, obviously you guys are working hard and everything, but do you feel like Eric's, you know, trying to make it fun also? And, and if so, what, what's that like for, for Jalen and JD? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Coach Muzz does a good job of trying to make sure we're having fun there in practice. Like yesterday he got our trainer and Kaywood out there and they were guarding each other. And <laughs> it was just a fun experience with the team. So he tries to make it fun, tries to make sure that we we're locked in, but we're also having fun doing it. So it keeps the process good. It keeps us interested in the whole thing. Yeah, What's um, just uh, getting to know each other still a little bit. So we do like games where somebody got to tell something about their life and and he listened to like a lot of podcasts. So like me, Stan, and Jay Will, we have different podcasts, and like he'll bring up a point about our podcast so that some of the teammates may not have knew. So it'd be. What's some of the what's some of the advice that you give the youth that's looking to be like Jalen or JD or Stanley? What's some of the advice that you're giving them out there back at home? Uh, just to keep going. Uh, every day not gonna be perfect. 
every day not going to be the way you want it to be. So you just got to keep fighting. Uh, just don't get down on yourself too much. Uh, and just keep going. Yeah. 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 Piggy, piggy, or you got it? You got it. All right, so piggyback off of that, you know, just as far as, you know, basketball, you know, to the youth, if, you know, just if you love what you're doing, then you're going to be able to get past, you know, the hard days because it's not always easy. But, you know, just make sure you love what you're doing and you just put your head down and work. And eventually you're going you're gonna to be able to make it to where, you, where you're trying to go. All right. That's the time we have for our student athletes. Thank you very much. Good Appreciate luck tomorrow. It. Thank you. So I'll head coach Eric Musselman and coach if you want to open up with a statement and then we'll uh, we'll take some questions. A statement. Wow. Just uh, we're happy to be here. I uh, feel like we've had a really good season, uh, especially after, uh, you know, going through a tough stretch where, where we were able to regroup and and uh, finish the season much like we did last year where we uh, got hot. We feel at the, at the right time and uh, we understand being a part of this tournament, just just getting into it. Uh, is, is, is really, really difficult for teams. Um, and now it's a whole new season for everybody that's in the tournament. Everybody's got uh, belief and confidence, um, and everybody's trying to just survive and advance and get one more game. All right, Mike, want to kick things off? It's right there. Mike Harrington, Buffalo News. Uh, Eric, we saw a lot of your, your social media presence yesterday, giving it up to the Bills and Sabres and such. Uh, just how much of the tournament is about embracing strange places, strange arenas, and having new experiences and having these guys understand that's all part of it. You still have to do the job, even though the, maybe none of them have ever been anywhere near Buffalo before. Yeah, I don't think any, you know, all of the teams are, are really locked in. Um, I'm not going to say that we're more uh, locked in or doing more prep than anybody else because I have tremendous respect for all the coaches, but we're not doing less. Um, you know, this will be our second practice for the day. We've already had several film sessions. But having said that, um, they're student athletes at the end of the day, and you want them to have life experiences. So going to Niagara Falls is, you know, there's a reason. We were just in the back um, talking about the Sabres. And, uh, you know, some of our guys didn't know that, that, that some of the historical significance um, of what, that NHL organization has done. We told them about one of the great hockey goalies of all time. Um, so we're back there even in the locker room trying to educate them and have fun with it. Um, so certainly we think it's a really, really big part and an important part for us to embrace wherever we are. I mean, having fun with the, uh, you know, Bills and I wore the shirt and guys are asking me, you know, do I have a favorite player on that team? And um, they did, a lot of guys did not know who the Buffalo Braves were, um, and I was able to kind of give the significance of them moving to San Diego. And um, so, yeah, I think it's really important. By the way, Ernie D is one of my favorite all-time players. Coach, you you mentioned how this is kind of the start of a new season. Uh, how valuable is it to have the returning experience that you have in the NCAA tournament, your guys who were there last year, and, and then others like Trey Wade and, and Chris who have been there before? Yeah, you know, I think that there's a lot of uh, discussion about how old teams are, um, which I think there's a great deal of significance in that. Obviously, Vermont, uh, fourth oldest team in college basketball. Um, and then there's, a, you know, then there's a separate side of, of us, us having uh, – over 300 minutes played in the NCAA tournament with player experience. Um, so I think that both are very valuable. Um, so I think there's significance in it. Right. We have a question back here, and we'll come to Brian. Coach, Mookie Hawkins, Buffalo Sports in 80. Welcome to Buffalo. Uh, have you told your players about the quarterback in Buffalo by any chance? 
I mean, I've certainly talked to the staff about him. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it going to take, you know, basically to put some of the ingredients together to cut down the nets here in uh, Buffalo? You know, I think the biggest thing right now is, is us worried, not worried, us continuing to work on our preparation uh, for Vermont. They, uh, they're so well coached. They really, really understand their roles. They have not lost in a long time. Uh, their last loss, they had two players that were sick. Um, it was an overtime game. So this is a team that's playing with great confidence. Um, you can see it and hear it in their interviews, uh, both with, with their head coach uh, and their players. And, uh, you know, I think everybody that steps into this thing, I mean, I, you know, I've talked about, you know, my, even myself as a player at the University of San Diego playing against Auburn. I mean, we were um, a low seed, and, and um, you know, if our point guard, not me, I was not in the game, but if our starting point guard doesn't get the ball hung up on his, on his hip, uh, we probably upset Auburn. And they had some NBA players, Frank Ford and some guys on their team that were really talented. But you've, this is a whole new, you know, that's why this tournament is so awesome because um, you just never know what's going to happen. And, and last year we fell behind uh, early, and we were able to have a really good second half. And so it's a 40-minute it's a game, and you've got to understand that as, 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 a, as a program. Coach, Brian Chinaki, Channel 2 uh, here in Buffalo. Kind of piggybacking off of the opening question that Mike had, you come out here, you embrace the city of Buffalo, you go viral with your Buffalo sports drip, then you get kind of a response back from the Bills on social media. First, how cool is it that they're able to embrace you back? I saw you pin that tweet from the, from the Bills. And then on top of that, did you grow up a, a sports fan in Buffalo at all, or did you follow specific players? Uh, can you kind of tie that all in together? Yeah, I mean, I think anybody my age uh, understands the significance of all the, the Super Bowls that, you know, didn't go the Bills way. But obviously, you know, Marv Levy, I mean, he's a guy that I've studied. And, and uh, you know, when you're younger and you watch teams win a lot like they did um, and their logo growing up in San Diego, I mean, their logo was cool. And, and, uh, but, but the Bills thing started during the pandemic. Um, where I had gotten some NBA teams to send some masks and T-shirts, and I'd wear a different one every day to practice. And then I was able to talk to the team about, hey, here's some history on this particular team, whether it's the Boston Celtics or the Lakers or whatever. And we were able to have some fun dialogue. Um, and the Bills were awesome. They sent me, which is the same shirts I wore the other day, they sent me a couple different shirts and some, some different masks. So um, I was able to break it out when we found out we were headed um, here to Buffalo. And to be. Hey, Eric, how you doing? I hope, hope your shoulder's feeling better. Um, you know, a decent Stanley, man, they waited nine combined years to get here. How happy are you that, you know, that, and they've obviously been key guys for you. Just how happy are you they're getting to play in the NCAA tournament? And how would you kind of maybe sum up what they've meant to the team this year and, and you know, in helping you get to this point? No, I mean, really happy for them because if we weren't <laughs> – if we weren't playing in this tournament, then they could call me a liar because um, part of the recruiting pitch was um, we are going to the N NCAA tournament. We don't know what's going to happen when we get there, but we have uh, the talent. Uh, we have the culture that if you guys come and, and uh, come to Arkansas, we're going we're gonna to give you an opportunity to play in this tournament because if we don't make it, it's going to be self-inflicted. Um, but both those guys have been absolutely phenomenal for us. Um, you know, you look at, at their seasons, there was a time where, you know, I took Stanley out of the starting lineup, um, and then he worked his way back into it. And uh, quite frankly, both of them, we need them to have good games to win in this tournament. Uh, we need both of them to have good games in order to win tomorrow. Uh, that's how important they are. Uh, DC's been a guy that we don't run any plays for, and he scores the basketball. And Stanley's done an incredible job of scoring it in the mid-range, scoring it in transition, and then also scoring the basketball from three-point range when defenses collapse uh, on our dribble drive. Okay, we'll go back here. 
Coach, uh, J.D., J. Will, and Stanley Mude said that this Vermont team kind of reminds them of a UNI that they played way back early in the season, not as fast as the SEC type of team. After playing, you know, 20-plus SEC games against that fast pace that most teams like to play, how difficult is it to kind of teach, you know, more of a half-pace game, a half-court game and kind of slow everything down? Well, not all the SEC teams like to play fast. Texas A&M plays pretty doggone slow. Um, but that's why we, uh, I mean, that's why we scheduled our non-conference the way that we did. We felt it was important to be able to play teams that play a whole bunch of different styles. Um, and we were able to do that, whether it's, you know, Northern Iowa, whether it was Mercer, um, that, you know, forced us to see some of our holes and to try to get guys to buy in, um, with some of our defensive concepts and, and along the way, it's like a roller coaster. There's ups and downs and, and, uh, you know, when we weren't doing what we were told, we didn't play well. And then we figured out the last two months of the season, um, how we want to play on both sides of the ball. Hey, Eric, um, earlier today, I asked Eric Henderson at South Dakota state, just kind of what he remembered about Stan when Stan was at South Dakota mentioned a couple big games, but that this season he feels like Stan's really improved defensively more so than, than anything. Just what improvements has he made specifically or like how has he evolved throughout the year to become, I guess, one of your, I guess, better on-ball defenders? Yeah, I, I think, Scotty, I mean, Stanley's improved in a lot of areas. I mean, he was, you know, uh, not much of a, of, a, of a defensive guy early on. Now he's one of our best defenders. I mean, because of his length, his athleticism, his anticipation, um, his toughness, his ability to defensive rebound, uh, he's been assigned to some really difficult matchups, especially in SEC play, where he's going up against guys that um, they can really score the ball, guys that are going to be playing beyond college, and he's done an incredible job defensively. And then the other area that he's that he's much improved upon is, you know, earlier in the year he was our kind of playing the backup five for us when when Jalen would come out we would slide him from the power forward spot or the four spot over uh, to the backup five and now he's he's basically played for us small forward and that's when we became a better defensive team a longer team a tougher team and a way better uh, defensive rebounding team so he's gone from guarding fours and fives to now guarding twos and threes and he's done a great great job stayed out of foul trouble and altered a lot of shots for opposing teams, perimeter players. Okay, Jeff. Uh, Jeff Goodman, um, you've hit the portal for years now. You've done a good job with the portal. This year with the, the one-time transfer rule kicking in, how do you think that's affected you guys and, and kind of nationally with kids not having to sit out? Yeah, Jeff, I think that it's, 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 it's kind of been a game changer. Um, <laughs> You know, there's a lot. There's been a, a lot of coaching changes, um, and as my wife and I were talking, it's much like the NBA now. Um, as a coach, um, because of the ability to change your roster quickly, obviously in the NBA it's free agency, and then you might have a draft pick or two. Well, college basketball has turned into a little bit um, where. You know, a lot of programs are only taking one or two freshmen, much like a first rounder and a second rounder, and then they're filling in with, with free agents, whether it be a, a transfer who's a second year player uh, or maybe a, a grad transfer. So I, I think it's leveled the playing field. Um, you know, I look at, at, at Vermont's team, and, and they have, uh, you know, Finn Sullivan from the University of San Diego, who I just found out couple minutes ago that my son sat next to him in a class a couple years ago, my younger son. Um, you know, they have a George Washington transfer. So, so I think that across the board, it's, it's, it's really changed the complexion. I mean, if you watch Big 12 games and you see what Texas has done with their roster and you see what Texas Tech has done, and they've done a, Texas Tech's done an incredible job of finding the Davion Warrens and, and, and Adonis Arms and guys that maybe played at a lower level that have been able to contribute. It. So I think it's really changed everything in college basketball, meaning <laughs> coaches and, and longevity and so on. Do you like the fact that kids don't have to sit out? Like it, it took you guys a little while to get going this year where normally maybe you have that kid 
for a year in your system and you're able to kind of get it going a little bit quicker maybe? Yeah, I, 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 I think, Jeff, that um, the sit-out player, I look at the success stories, and I'm only talking about, you know, the small sample size that I have. Caleb Martin, Cody Martin, the sit-out year was incredible. So many agents were telling him to leave Nevada. And we were telling them the benefits and the holes in their game. And we'll see what type of salaries those guys that were, quote, unquote, too old um, when they stayed an extra year and how much it helped them. Because it's really about, at the next level, longevity. And those two guys made incredibly smart decisions coming back to school when everybody was telling them they would be too old. Um, but the people that were telling them that have never sat in a draft room and don't know what the conversations are like about second rounders. Um, I look at J.D. Note and how his sit-out year, how much that's impacted his growth as a player, and maybe what that growth wouldn't have looked like without him. He learned a whole new position, and there's a lot to go into that. And I look at you know, Jordan Caroline's sit-out year and, and, the, and, and, and the impact that it's having on his European uh, career. So. I'll, I miss personally the player development year because I think it's really good for the player. But I do think movement, player freedom is the way it should be. It really should be because that's the way of our world right now. When I grew up, everybody went to one high school. Now guys go three or four high schools. When I was growing up, well, there wasn't even AAU then, but there was Junior Olympics. You played on one Junior Olympic team, and that was it. Now guys are playing for seven, eight uh, AAU teams, you know, over the course of a four-year time frame. So that's how college basketball should be. You should, you should have the, the ability uh, to make your own decision just as any student. If my son's at the University of San Diego and not playing basketball and he wants to go uh, to USC or UCLA, all he does is apply to school, and if he gets in, he can go. And so I do think that uh, it's the way of the world right now, and you have to adapt and uh, – it's good for the student athlete. All right, quickly, we have time for two more. We'll go here, and then we'll finish up with Mike over here. Oh, uh, Coach, it seems like a lot of people, especially some national media folks, like Vermont as a possible upset pick. I just wonder what you make of that and if you talk to the team about that at all and what you say, if so. Um, do you think I talk to the team about it? <laughs> yeah. They've seen all the clips, and they'll continue to see the clips just as they did last year. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's – uh, my wife continues to remind me. It's not everybody. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, any way, shape, or form that you can motivate your team, that's our job to, uh, to try to figure out every button that you can possibly push uh, to get your team in the right mental frame. And finally, Mike right here. Uh, Eric Mike Harrington, Buffalo News again. We just had Dan Hurley in here, obviously great family coaching lineage. You're up next. Your father, obviously, we know about. But as you're now getting to the point where you've done this for a long time at so many levels, what do you still take from him potentially or other mentors even at this stage of your career compared to when you were a younger coach? You mean from my father or from, yeah. from Coach Hurley? <laughs> my dad? Yeah. I mean, I think about my dad all the time. I'll think about my dad uh, even in the flow of a game. Um, we'll take an absurd shot because um, I give our guys a lot of freedom offensively, and I'm, I'll pound the table, and then I'll kind of chuckle to myself and say my dad's up there thinking, that's an absurd shot. What are you doing? You're a horrific coach. Um, I'll think about, uh, you know, what he call a timeout now. I, uh, there's, I'm constantly... I mean, he was my idol, my best friend. And uh, whether it's during the season and I'm home alone and I've told our local uh, media that we made a change in the starting lineup, there wasn't a single coach that brought it up. There wasn't a player because we asked for player feedback. Nobody brought it up. It was me sitting alone late one night asking what my dad would do when we struggled. And he said, put the five toughest, five biggest five longest people out there regardless of position. And that's how we stumbled into the lineup of being so big because his teams at the University of Minnesota and even with the Timberwolves were always, you know, big, strong players, even at the off guard or the point guard position. And, 
and that's what we've done. We've changed our, our team. We kind of slid everybody down a spot. When in college basketball, everybody has, you know, kind of down, you know, gone the opposite way. And this group's done a good job. When people try to go small against us, it actually falls right into our lap um, because we do have good, good athleticism uh, even when we're a taller team. All right. Thank you for your time, Coach. Thanks. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. All right, we'll have uh, New Mexico State student athletes and head coach in about 10 minutes. Just a reminder, a recording of this press conference will be available on the NCAA digital media.